Welcome back and let's move on to the next 10 MCQs of this paper of physics section of 2009. Now, 91 says, what value of resistor must be added in this circuit below to give a total resistance of 32 ohms? Now, you have this resistance diagram right over here uh, or the circuit diagram right over here. You can see the voltages have been splitted or uh, this 12 volts has been splitted across these three. Now, if you add these two together, it's 6 volts. So, this one will be getting 6 volts only. I mean, you just need to find out the resistance. In order to find out the resistance, since we already know the potential difference, we need to find out the current. To find out the current is very easy. You have the total resistance that you need to get for the entire circuit, and you also have the total EMF of the entire circuit. So when you have these two, you can use Ohm's law to calculate the total current that is flowing through the circuit by using V over R. So V is 12 and R is 32, and that's your ampere current. So you have the total current that is flowing through it as well now. Once you have the current, once you have the voltage, all you need to do is just find out the resistance resistance again. R is equal to V over I. Just simplify it and you get an answer of 16 ohms and that's it. Yep, that's correct. 92. Polarity of X and Y for the magnetic field line shown below. X is the north pole because it's emitting and Y is the south pole because that's absorbing. I don't know why this is even a question. So north to south. So this is north and that's south. We have option B. Moving on, 93. What is the similarity between Earth's magnetic and gravitational fields? Now, see, these both of the, now we are talking about Earth only, not talking about any other planet. We're not talking about uh, magnetic gravitational fields of a magnet and stuff. So they are dependent on the distance from the Earth, obviously, because the more you go away from the Earth, both of them have to become weaker, right? Just one second. Let's compare this. Yep, 93 is a C. I'm moving on. And for now, blue light is shown on a metal surface, and electrons are ejected at a given rate. Now, at a certain with a certain amount of energy. Now, we are we've been told that it's blue light, so it will have a frequency of blue light. Now, we are just increasing the intensity. Intensity is increased, but it's still blue. So this means frequency is still the same, but you are increasing the number of photons that are that are coming and taking in the energy because that's how you are going to increase the intensity if you're keeping the frequency constant. So if you have more photons, then that would mean more thermoelectric effect would occur, right? So which describes the rate and the energy per electron of the ejected electrons? The rate will definitely increase, but the energy will be constant due to a constant frequency, okay? So option B is correct. Let's move on to 95. In case of power failure, doors and stairways in large buildings are often outlined with special paint that blow for some time. This is called photo phosphorescence. Which isotope is produced when this much decays by emitting an alpha particle? Now we need this much and it is decaying by emitting out an alpha particle. All you need to do is just subtract the four from this mass, which is two will be left with 210, and subtract the 2 from 83, to we are going to be left with 81. So this is the element with 81 and 210. 97. What describes the atomic and mass number of a nucleus that has emitted a beta particle? Beta means an electron with a zero mass but negative one charge. So you have the atomic number not changing at all because it's zero, zero mass. But yeah, the proton number, it will increase by one unit, so it will change. So mass number does not change, it stays constant, but atomic number, yes, it does. Well, 98. Now, half-life of a radioactive metal or material is 14.7 years. How long will it take for a sample of this material to decay to a 2 for 5 percent of its initial value? Now, let's look at all the different half-lives. After first half-life, it's going to become 50, second 25, then 12.5, then 6.25, then 3.125, then finally 1.56. Now, 1.56 is less than 2.5. This means that there's something has happened over here. The 2.5 percent came during this half-life. Now, let's count all the half-lives. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five half-lives have gone by default. They have gone. So 14.7 times 5 is calculated, which turns out to be 73.5. And then during this time, a few years later, you will get 2.5%. So yep, it's going to be slightly higher than the 73.5. The best possible answer is 78. 1799 now. In an automatic clothes dryer, you have this uh, stuff going on. You have a vertical circle. now, And it's just about to. 
The dryad is designed so that the clothes tumble and do not simply stick to the drum as it rotates. What is the speed when the drum must rotate? When at this much cage is sweated, the top of the drum will just begin to tumble. Just begin to tumble actually means that there is no other influence over here. It's just the weight that is responsible and that is actually acting as a centripetal force. So you just equate the two. So weight is equal to the centripetal force. Mg equals mv squared over r. Mm cancel out. You are just left with the v. V is equal to square root of gr. So you have g stand and r is 0 0.375. And when you do the calculation here, the 10 multiplied by 0 0.375 will actually give you under root of 3.75. And under root of 3.75 is very close to 4. Under root 4, right? Under root 4 answer is 2, but this answer is not going to be 2 is going to be slightly less than 2. So because it's going to be slightly less than 2 and this is the only answer, that's going to be the only answer. And that's it, which is less than 2. Then last but not the least, a linear accelerator is a device that is used to accelerate electrons using electromagnetic fields. With time, the electron energy increases and the speed of the electron approaches the speed of light. Now, you guys know what's happening here, right? We are moving at the speed of light, so the, all the concepts of, this, of theory of relativity should start jumping into your minds now. All right, we had three major concepts, the three key concepts of theory of relativity mass variation, time dilation, and length contraction. Now, which of the following is true with regards to an electron speed and its mass and the, and the speed of the electron approaches to zero? Now, you have this same electron, all right, and it's moving towards the speed of light. Well, now, they're asking us what happens to the speed. Obviously, it was not first moving at the speed, and now it has approached the speed of light. It's a very big increase, right? It increases substantially. And what about the mass? To calculate the mass, we use this formula, right? Mass equals m naught over under root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Even if the velocity, uh, even if the speed is, starts increasing, right? It increases to a very high value. Still, the overall denominator, it actually turns out to be a number that is very close to zero, close to one. Only exception is when you uh, when you get a zero, but you don't get a zero actually. That's the fact. You don't you never get a zero. So you get a number that is very very close to one, and because it is very close to one, the mass will increase, but the increase is going to be okay and. By saying that it's going to be a value very close to 1, it I, I'm actually saying a value less than 1, but very close to 1. In 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.89, it's the same. So because it's less than 1, the answer will be slight increase. It will be an increase, but it's going to be a very slight increase. Option C is correct. Okay. One might argue that, yeah, the, the mass might become infinite, but again, why would the mass become infinite for no reason? Now, moving on. It, it doesn't. Mass never becomes infinite. Okay, I searched this up. I, I looked it up, all right, and I, I tried figuring this out. But the uh, only explanation that I could get was that mass never becomes infinite in this situation. Because even if it reaches the speed of light, the mass does in, it, it increases, but does not increase up to infinity. Okay, it doesn't increase up to infinity. It increases, mass does increase, but not up to the speed of infinity. There's a slight increase in mass only. We are done with the next 10 MCQs as well. Meet 